Chapter 3, Hamish Goes Swimming. In fact, for a long time after that, Mr Magic, as all Class 3 was soon calling him, didn't forget that he was meant to be a teacher and not a wizard. Nothing peculiar happened for weeks and weeks and the lessons went on just as they would have with any other teacher. The magic carpet, the chips and the snake seemed like a dream. Then Hamish Bigmore came to stay at Thomas and Pete's house. This wasn't a good thing, at least not for Thomas and Pete, but they had no choice. Hamish Bigmore's mother and father had to go away for a few days and Thomas and Pete's mum had offered to look after Hamish until they came back. She never asked Thomas and Pete what they thought about the idea until it was too late. Hamish Bigmore's behaved even worse than they had expected. He found all of their favourite books and games, which they had tried to hide from him, and spoilt them or left them lying about the house where they got trodden on or broken. He pulled stuffing out of Wim's favourite teddy bear, bounced up and down so hard on the garden climbing frame that it bent and talked for hours and hours after the light had been put out so that Thomas and Pete couldn't get to sleep. It's awful, said Thomas. I wish that something really nasty would happen to him. And it did. Hamish Bigmore was behaving just as badly at school as Thomas and Pete's house. The business of the ruler turning into a snake had frightened him for a few days, but no longer than that. And now he was up to his old tricks again, doing anything rather than listening to Mr Majika and behaving properly. On Wednesday morning, before Hamish Bigmore's mother and father were due to come home, Mr Majika was given class three a nature study lesson with tadpoles in the glass tank that sat by his desk. Hamish Bigmore was being ruder than ever. Does anybody know how long it takes tadpoles to turn into frogs? Mr Majika asked class three. Have it the slightest idea, said Hamish Bigmore. Please, said Melanie, holding up her hand. I don't think it's very long. Only a few weeks. You should know, sneered Hamish Bigmore. You like you look like just like a tadpole yourself. Melanie began to cry. Be quiet, Hamish Bigmore, said Mr Majika. Melanie is quite right. It all happens very quickly. The tadpoles grow arms and legs and very soon. I shouldn't think that they'll grow at all after if they see you staring at them through the glass, said Hamish Bigmore to Mr Majika. Your face would frighten them to death. Hamish Bigmore, I have had enough of you, said Mr Majika. Will you stop behaving like this? No, I won't, said Hamish Bigmore. Mr Majika pointed a finger at him and Hamish Bigmore vanished. There was a complete silence. Class three stared at the empty space where Hamish Bigmore had been sitting. Then Pandora Green pointed in the glass tank and began to shout, Look, look, a frog, a frog! One of the tadpoles had turned into a frog! Mr Majika looked closely at the tank. He then put his head into his hands. He seemed very upset. No, Pandora, he said. This isn't one of the tadpoles. It's Hamish Bigmore. For a moment, class three was struck dumb. Then everyone burst out laughing. Hooray, hooray, Hamish Bigmore has been turned into a frog. Good old Mr Magic. It looks like Hamish Bigmore, doesn't it, said Pete, said to Thomas. Certainly the frog's expression looked very much like Hamish's face and it was sort of splashing noisily around the tank and carrying on the silly sort of way that Hamish did. Mr Majika looked very worried. Oh dear, oh dear, he kept saying. Didn't you mean to do it, asked Jody. Mr Majika shook his head. Certainly not. I quite forgot myself. It was a complete mistake. Well, said Thomas, you can turn him back again, can't you? Mr Majika shook his head. I'm not sure that I can, he said. Thomas and Pete looked at him in astonishment. You see, he went on, it's an old spell, something I learned years and years ago and thought I'd forgotten. I don't know what were the exact words I used. And as I'm sure you understand, it's not possible to undo a spell unless you know exactly what the words were. So Hamish Bigmore might have to stay a frog, said Pete. That's the best thing I've ever heard. Mr Majika shook his head. Maybe, but not for him. I'll have to try and do something. He began to mutter a whole series of strange sounding words under his breath. All kind of things began to happen. The room went dark and the floor seemed to rock. Green smoke came out of an empty jar on Mr Majika's desk. He tried out some more words and this time there was a small thunderstorm in the sky. But nothing happened to the frog. Oh dear, said Mr Majika, what am I going to do?